In this tutorial, I want to take a look at columns and grids. Now, we have already created a document, and I have six pages in here. So if I want to go to a page and modify the grid or the columns, I'm going to zoom up just a little bit. Well, you can see my zoom up here if you want. So I'm going to look at the page that I'm currently on. You'll notice that um, it actually selects a page um, in the Pages menu, and I can also shift uh, select multiple pages. So just be aware of the different ways that you have selected pages because that will modify how you are applying margins and columns. Now you'll notice that if I go to my layout panel or layout um, dialogues here you'll see that I have pages where I can add pages and insert pages and you can also do that from the pages dialog but then I also have margins and columns here if I click on margins and columns I'm gonna make sure the preview button is on and I'm gonna start adding some columns now notice that it's adding it to both of these pages at once and that's because both of those pages are selected currently I'm gonna cancel this and make sure that only one page is selected and go to my margins and columns and start to add pages or my columns in my panel here and you'll notice it only creates margins and columns in that page so it is very important about what pages you currently have selected when you go to your margins and columns because it will affect those pages only now if you create a new document and you set up your columns in that new document however many pages you create doesn't really matter because they will all have the same number of columns because you set that up as a default when you created the document but since we're doing this after the fact it is a little different now one of the things should be pointed out about columns which is really 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 important and that is a typical column setup in order to be most effective one of the things that people have found is that by using the 960 that grid system the 960 grid system there are a couple different ways to do grids one of the ways to do grids um, actually let me go back it's right here um, is using a 12 point 12 column system or a 16 column system now this comes from the graphic design industry and you'll notice that there are different ways to use these grids which is really really amazing the nice thing about the 12 column and 16 column systems is that you can divide these systems multiple ways. To, as an example of this, let me open up a 12 column grid system, a sample of it, and you'll notice that with the same, within the same column system, we can do all these different layouts. So I'm going to actually go to my preview mode just so you can see this a little bit better. We can divide these columns into 6, 4, 3, two or even one of course column and we can also use these columns in non um, let's say symmetrical ways so that we have two this way or only two that way or we group that one with three and that one with five so we get a little bit asymmetrical balance to the page now making use of columns is really important because you definitely do not want to um, make your document not have these columns but have this type of se separation and one of the reasons why is because of the automatic reflow ability or automatic page adjustment ability of InDesign in order to demonstrate this I'm going to go to the layout menu and go to layout adjustment and make sure that that is enabled um, by default it is not enabled but since I'd already been playing with InDesign it was enabled here but you need to make sure that that is enabled before you start adjusting your margins. So now I'm going to go to my layout, adjust my margins and columns, and instead of adjusting my columns, I don't want to change that, but I can adjust my margins and my gutter and get very different results. Now you may notice that my um, I'm back to using PICAs and that's because this document was set up in PICAs. But anyway, you'll notice as I adjust my margins, Notice how it's making my page change. It's actually physically re, um, I guess, adjusting all of the different columns of all of my different objects on the entire document um, just by modifying 
uh, my columns and margins and gutters. The gutter is the space in between the different columns. And because I have the layout adjustment toggled on, um, it's a really flexible way of making global changes to an entire document just by um, using that option. So it's very, very powerful, and I definitely suggest that you start working with 12 or 16 column grids, even though it is a kind of visually um, a little confusing at first, you'll get used to it, and you'll start to find that you go to preview mode anyway um, after you've kind of got some setup because this really works well to um, to uh, help you design things effectively. Now I'm going to go back to my other document where I need to set up a 12 column grid and I'm only going to do it on this one page or I guess it's going to be on both pages since I have both selected currently and um, I'll just keep things set as they are. Now one of the things that I want to point out about this is one of the most typical things that you do is set up text. And so um, you're going to be creating text frames using these guides. So if I start to create a text frame, I can click and drag and create a text frame quite easily that will fill in that column. Easy. Now I do want to point out though that this is generally a bad idea because often you're going to have a document that has multiple columns and you're going to have those multiple columns exist in the entire document. So one of the nice features of InDesign, by the way, I'm just going to extend this out a little bit and fill this with some type by using fill with placeholder text. So one of the nice features of InDesign is the ability to have multiple columns within the text frame itself. So I'm going to extend this text frame across the entire document and then over on the top right of that document or that text frame when I am in the type mode and in the paragraph settings over on the top right hand corner you'll see the ability to add multiple columns to this text and that is so much more effective than creating um, individual columns for your text itself. Now the problem that you might see though is that right now I have five columns and that of course does not match my um, 12 point grid or my 12 column grid. So you're still going to be stuck with using the, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, or six column setup. However, you could of course stretch your text frame across um, maybe not all the columns and and use it in a different way. You just want to make sure that your text is matching the original column setup um, so that it is simulating having those the correct um, I guess grid system you know use. It's just that this is a little bit easier because you only have one text frame instead of multiple text frames. So that's just a tidbit about using um, text with multiple grid systems where um, you definitely don't want to start making individual text frames and having to wrap things lots of different ways or create all of your guides that way because uh, or all of your text frames that way because that's really a lot of work. Anyway in the next tutorial we're going to take a look at other things that you can do with text so go on.